Good morning. Today is Saturday the 8th, and we're going to start with the daily reflection on the New Testament. And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Luke chapter 8, verses 46 through 48. Ultimately, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the source of spiritual and physical healing. As the divine healer affirmed, the woman who had been hemorrhaging for a dozen years exercised great faith in the Lord. She was endowed with one of the gifts of the Spirit, faith to be healed. With humble faith, she believed that to touch Jesus would heal her. The integrity of her heart opened the way for a healing to take place. Unlike the sick who gathered by the pool of Bethsaida, this woman exercised faith in Jesus Christ. She knew that healing was to be found in him and in her faith to be healed. Though today we cannot physically touch the hem of Christ's garment, we can nevertheless exercise faith. We can keep the commandments, have hope in his teachings, and trust in his promises and his power. What kind of life would it be if, like, we had no sickness, no infirmities, we just felt healthy all the time? Like, I'm thinking about my eyes, I'm thinking about my taste, and it's like, if I didn't have those things... Would I have any trials at all besides customers? I mean, trials of patience and humility. Anyways, today is Learn of Me, Chapter 40, Redeemer Jesus Christ. Um, we start off with a question. What does it mean to me that he lives and that his work of redemption is not over but still happening? It means I'm not done yet that there's time for me, there's hope for me. Bruce D. Porter, Redeemer of Israel, October 1995. I testify that the eldest son of our Father in heaven did redeem us from the bondage of sin. We are a purchased people. In a world of Paul, in the words of Paul, ye are bought with a price. In the garden of Gethsemane, the firstborn of the Father descended below all things. He bore our griefs, he carried our sorrows. At Golgotha, at the hands of men whose very sins he had atoned, he poured out his soul unto death, freely relinquishing his life as he overcame the world. We've been like going through the week of the last week of Christ with the kids. And last night was the crucifixion. And Mason is stuck on um, revenge. He's like, oh, is he going to kill those guys? <laughs> and it's like, no, Mason, do you hear what he says? He says, forgive them. He wants to forgive the people who are doing this to him. <gasps> what? <laughs> he does not understand it at all. But um, it's interesting to, like, do we have that aspect when somebody wrongs us? Do we have that, oh, they're going to get their comeuppance. They better. They better get what's coming to them for what they did to me. But it's like, what have I done to somebody else? What's my comeuppance? If that's if karma is how it works, then what's mine? All right, Joseph Fielding Smith, I know that my Redeemer liveth, October 1971. According to this great and eternal plan, salvation is in Christ. It comes because of the infinite and eternal atonement which he wrought by the shedding of his blood he is the Son of God, and He came into the world to ransom men from the temporal and spiritual death that came because of what we call the fall. Then, as I was reading through, one of the scriptures stood out to me. It's Matthew 20, verse 28, and it said, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. The first part of that is what stuck out to me. When they talk about... Um, What is it? 
his yoke, pick up my yoke. Does he say pick up my yoke? Share my burden uh, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I, they talk about that, it's drop yours, drop what you're carrying and come over here with me, Christ, and together let's pull my yoke. Leave your troubles away leave them at the door, drop them, and come carry my bur my burdens. And what are his burdens? Even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. The thoughts that are happening in my brain. If we drop our yoke, our burdens, and we come and we yoke ourselves to Christ, what is his yoke? It's to minister to others. He came not to be ministered to, to have somebody take care of him, to comfort him when he's sick, to, um, you know, have people bring him meals or to say, woe is me. Look at me. I'm so tired. I'm so worn down. I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm sad. His loneliness, like studying this and the new Testament and Easter week, his loneliness would be unbearable for me. Unbearable. But if I drop my yoke and I come and I, I'm yoked with him, my loneliness would be gone. His loneliness would be gone. I don't know, just some thoughts I'm having about this scripture. And then we have a question. How can Jesus Christ's approach to ministering be an example in my own service? <sighs> Then we've got a question from LeGrand Curtis Jr. Redemption, October 2011. Thus, if we repent, we can be forgiven of our sins, the price having been paid by our Redeemer. This is good news for us all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Those who have strayed significantly from the paths of righteousness uh, desperately need this redemption. And if they fully repent, it is theirs to claim. But those who have worked hard to live good lives also desperately need this redemption. For none can get to the presence of the Father without Christ's help. Thus, his loving redemption allows the laws of justice and mercy to be satisfied in the lives of all who repent and follow Christ. When I feel burdened with the evil around me, how can I let Jesus Christ help me? I think that has to do with the yoking. Why is it important to remember that the redemption he offers to me is available to all sinners, even those who sin against me? There's this one thing. I like to scroll through Pinterest um, before I fall asleep. I know it's probably like the dumbest thing ever, but I like to. And there's this one that always pops up. It's saying, you will never look into the eyes of a person who God does not love. And you're like, okay. So when that person comes into the store and I'm judging them for how dirty their fingernails are or they're wearing pajamas or they're being really annoying and don't know how to do their Amazon returns, I need to take a step back and be like, God loves this person as much as he loves me. This is a loved child of God and I need to take a step back. Detog Christofferson, Redemption, April 2013. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we ought to do all we can to redeem others from suffering and burdens. Even so, our greatest redemptive service will be to lead them to Christ. Without his redemption from death and from sin, we have only a gospel of social justice. That may provide some help and reconciliation in the pre present, but it has no power to draw down from heaven perfect justice and infinite mercy. Ultimate redemption is in Jesus Christ and him alone. How can I show gratitude for being rescued from the chains of hell? When would it be helpful to me to remember this image of being encircled in his arms? Quite frankly, all the time. What's the difference between believing in Jesus Christ and believing Jesus Christ? How can my faith lead to entreating him personally? That's an interesting question. What is the difference between believing in Jesus Christ and believing Jesus Christ? 
believing in him is I believe he had a plan. I believe he came to the earth. I believe he redeemed me. Believing him is believing what he said, that I'm worthy, that I'm his, that, that I'm worthwhile. What suffering is relieved by the doctrine that Jesus Christ redeems children? Ezra Taft Benson, Jesus Christ, Our Savior and Redeemer, October 1983. To qualify as the Redeemer of all the fathers, our Father's children, Jesus had to be perfectly obedient to all the laws of God. Because he subjected himself to the will of the Father, he grew from grace to grace until he received a fullness of the Father's power. Thus he had all power, both in heaven and on earth. Once this truth about the one we worship as the Son of God is understood, we can more readily comprehend how he had power to heal the sick, cure all manner of diseases, raise the dead, and command the elements. Even devils whom he cast out were subject to him and acknowledged his divinity. What evidence do I see in my life of the wonderful love made manifest by the Father and the Son? I'm going to think about that one. And then here's the group discussion. Look at some coupons and gift certificates and explain what is meant to redeem them. Refer to the very broad and rich definition of redeem at the top of this chapter. And discuss how Jesus Christ's service matches the description there. Come up with examples from the scriptures or personal experiences when he has redeemed you or others. Some additional reading. Carlos A. Amado, Christ the Redeemer, April 2014. Richard G. Scott, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, April 1997. Marion G. Romney, Jesus Christ our Redeemer, October 1973. Legrand R. Curtis Jr., Redemption, October 2011. Detog Christofferson, Redemption, April 2013. Jennifer C. Lane, The Lord Will Redeem His People, Adoptive Covenant and Redemption in the Old Testament, in Sperry Symposium Classics, the Old Testament, uh, Religious Study Center, Brigham Young University, and Deseret Book 2005, which you can find at rsc.byu.edu. Stephen E. Robinson, Believing Christ, The Parable of the Bicycle and Other Good News, Deseret Book 1992. Anthony Sweat, Christ in Every Hour, Chapter 3, Deseret Book, 2016. All right. I think this was a very good chapter for this week, for the end of this week. We've got one more day. Um, so that was... Learn to Me, Chapter Forder. Forder. Learn of me chapter 40, Redeemer Jesus Christ, and tomorrow we do chapter 41, Relationships with the Father Jesus Christ. I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer. The eighth. Um, we've only got one. It's the true prayers of St. Gertrude and St. McTilde. Tilde. I adore and praise and bless thee, O Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks for the love and confidence with which, having overcome death, raising from the tomb, thou hast glorified our human flesh, and ascending into heaven, hast placed it at the right hand of God, beseeching thee on behalf of the souls for which I pray, that thou wilt deign to make them partakers of thy glory and thy victory. Some of these prayers are very beautiful and have very beautiful sentiments, and I enjoy them quite a bit. They teach me how I should pray. All right. That's all for today. I love you all. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay warm. Bye.